my way to the Empire Casino in London today where I am really do a run good session. So let's see if we can make it happen. So I sat down at the table and already I had this very interesting hand. An old man in the low jack limps, high jack limps as well. We have ace-10 suited and raise it up to 15. The button who has just sat down with 120, he calls. Small blind calls, big blind folds, the old man calls and hijack now also folds, which I don't understand why you would limp there and when everyone else calls you just fold. But anyway, we have a beautiful flop, but it's a bit treacherous because we lose to queen jack and there is still plenty of value to get. So I'm planning on actually c betting this here, even though we're multi-way and now the old man bets 25 into 64. Now this is the kind of guy, he's not exactly an old man coffee type, but I've never really seen him bluff much or do anything crazy. He sometimes limps ace king, so that's why I am actually a bit careful with this and maybe he even limps aces. So uh, that's why at this point I don't want to raise him. I just call the button snap calls as well and the small blind calls. So all four of us continue the party here. The five of spades brings in a flush draw and now the low jack checks. At this point I'm thinking well now my hand is probably best. I'm still not totally convinced he could have queen jack, he could have ace king, he could have aces but because he's slowing down I'm feeling a little bit better about my hand. So I now bet 125 pretty big but I think if I am good then I might as well get a lot of value. The button snap jams here and I say jam here only has 80 so it's basically just a call and the small blind now folds and the low jack calls. So at this point I'm already thinking well should I try to bet the river here or not. It doesn't get to that because as soon as this blank river comes the old man jams. So admittedly it's only 115 and the whole pot is 494. I assume that I'm winning against the button, but what good is that if I lose against the low jack? So I'm getting insanely good odds here. I only have to be good just under 20% of the time. I'm thinking, I'm looking at the guy and I'm just thinking I'm almost never good him here, but just on the off chance, I just have to call. And I know it is a big bet in monetary terms, but in terms of SPR and the pot size and pot odds and everything it's not so i just flick in the call and the old man shows king jack the other guy has ace jack and he couldn't believe that he didn't win with ace jack but that's beside the point but yeah the old man so let's just rewind this he limped king jack off okay he then let out when he had second pair and a gut shot i mean already this is, this is just really bad then he called my big bet on the turn and then he jammed the river in a protected side pot so you have to consider that the guy with ace jack would have won it if i had folded so he would only have won the, the peanuts that were in the side pot i don't know what he was doing here but i guess that's why live poker is so profitable in this next hand we have a bluffy low jack, very loose aggressive player, barely ever folds pre-flop so he makes it 10. The button is an aggro fish as I call him, he had only sat down 10 or 15 minutes earlier but already raising the last hand he had raised with queen 8 offsuit and by raising I mean 3 betting. The small blind who is not a bad player but quite loose he calls here, kind of makes sense against these guys guys if you have a speculative hand to cold call the three bet and we have ace king off this is a mandatory four bet never ever call and absolutely never ever uh, fold so we make it 120 the low jack looks at us and almost snap jams the other two players both moan and get out of the hand and at this point i took my time but i was never folding against this guy i knew that i probably wasn't much ahead although i wouldn't rule out that he does this 
sometimes with ace queen or ace jack or sometimes even something else but normally i would expect to see jacks queens or maybe even kings or aces but that would be bad luck so be it but here we run into pocket jacks so it's still almost a flip but although we run it twice we lose both boards and we are 400 pounds down in this hand and here we have what I call the fold of the century. Well, maybe not quite, but it was still pretty impressive. We have an old man who's been running super hot. He raises to seven and we have king queen suited in the big blind. I considered three betting, but the reason I didn't do it was because he normally limped quite a bit. So I thought maybe he is quite strong here and I have a really good hand. I call pretty good flop here, top pair, second kicker. I check, he C bets nothing unusual here i was again considering raising he probably won't see but here with jacks or tens which he would call he might have queen jack although we block that and if he has a better hand than that then we won't get him to fold and if he has a hand like ace jack or jack 10 or whatever then raise doesn't accomplish much because he will just fold so i call here now beautiful queen on the turn here we check and unfortunately he checks behind now i would definitely have a check raised if he had bet but it doesn't happen and on the nine um, river here with a missed flush draw i thought that now there are two options here either i just check but i don't think that would really do much because i don't see him reopening a bluff here so i thought if he has a good hand i am going for big value and yes the pot is small and i can't go too big i could have considered over betting in the end i went for 35 so it's not even a massive bet but i thought that i would always get called by any pair basically and he snap folds pocket king's face up now i really don't know how he did that i would never ever have expected him to fold such a hand i wouldn't even have expected him to fold eight seven or something like that but he found a very impressive fold with pocket kings he said afterwards that he didn't think that i would have done this with anything else than a queen fair play to him now we're getting into a series of three hands in a row against the same villain. Here he raises to seven and I had just seen that he had made a bet to seven with a weak hand so I decided to raise it up here on the button with king jack offsuit. He called and we flop king four deuce. This is a board that it's not too bad to just check but I thought if I bet small here, I could get some value still or even get him to bluff raise me. So I go for 15 into 53, which is the GTO size. However, a lot of live villains won't see it like that. They will just interpret it as something super weak. So that's probably what I thought at least what the cutoff would do here when he check raised me definitely not going anywhere i called the three of clubs here well ace five gets there but i don't think he has a lot of that he now checks anyway and no point in me betting now into a polarized range because he was basically saying he either has a really strong hand or a bluff he wouldn't normally do this with pocket nines or so although it's not impossible given my small bet. But anyway, I just check and he goes for a half pot bet on the river. And I tanked for a while and then I just try to do a bit of hand reading. So he check raised me on the flop, but then didn't bet the turn. And now he bets half pot. So that doesn't sound like a super polarizing bet on this river. If he had made it pot or over bet or even at least 75%. So then I would have thought maybe he just re-merged something that he didn't want to bet there again. But especially in combination with a flash draw being out there, if he really had a strong hand, I don't think he would have checked the turn. And that river bet just looked a bit fishy to me. Also the nonsense half pot sizing. So I had to go for a call. 
and he announced good call. He had ace jack. Maybe not the worst check raise in the world on the flop. However, he shouldn't have called ace jack off suit pre flop. But very soon he would have the chance to get his money back. There is a limp, he limps behind. We raise it up to 15 with King Jack suited on the button. Both limpers call. Flop is 974 with two spades. Both check to us, and the board is not good for our range or for our hand. So happy to just check behind we don't even have a backdoor flush draw now the 10 hits on the turn hijack checks again and now our friend who just tried to bluff us with the ace jack in the previous hand he bets 10 into 48 so he's giving us almost six to one here and we have two overs and a gut shot so there is no way i would ever fold in this situation so i call hijack folds and on the river at least we make top pair now but also the front door flush hits but this time the cutoff checks and so I thought I have to go for value here he most likely doesn't have a flush if he had a, has a 10 or a 9 he might still call I just think I made it a little bit too big because I made it 40 I should have gone more like 30 here but I don't think that's too bad, just being a bit nitpicky. And he snap calls and he has jack eight offsuit for a turned gut shot straight. I never put him on that. With two flush draws out there, he only bet 10 into 48. Then when the flush came in, he check called my bet. I would absolutely not have expected that. Did I go too thinly for value here? I don't think so. As I said, I just think I possibly made it a little bit too big. But it is very annoying. The reverse implied odds of getting the king there on the river are really annoying. I tried to get some value and it went wrong this time. So this is episode number three in the battle between the cutoff and me. And once again, we are on the button. So under the gun plus one limps, the hijack now makes it eight. The cutoff calls and with ace jack offsuit, I think I have a good hand to isolate one of these two players. So I go 35, the limper folds, blinds fold and the hijack calls. And then because he calls the the cutoff has an easy call as well and on this board again it's not great and most of the time I would actually check behind but because I have had very tight image so far I think that I could get away or I thought at least that I could get away with a bet here so I go 15 to 110 this is kind of a bit of an in-between size didn't want to go big as I would have gone in a heads up port but whilst the hijack folds the cutoff calls and now the seven of diamond hits giving us a gut shot we still have two overs cutoff checks again and he's only got 150 behind which means that now it's either I, I bet big now or I mean I jam or I give up and I considered that jamming would be the best option so I did just that so it says 315 but it's basically effective only 150 into 200 and 10. So I'm using the fold equity calculator from Red Chip Poker. I put in all the data, so 210 pounds in the pot. I have to shuffle 150. I don't have to call anything. And the estimated percentage equity when called. So I said it's 18. If he has a pair, then I have the ace outs the jack outs and the nine outs so that would be 20 percent. but if he has a set i still have the nine outs which would be about nine percent so overall i think somewhere between 15 and 18 percent i need fold equity of 22 percent to break even if we have 18 percent equity let's say we only have 14 percent equity we still only need to achieve 27% and I thought this is really achievable so I decided to go for it as I said and he tanked for a long long time and then 
he started talking to me and he said this will either be a big hero call or like really a bad one and in the end unfortunately he flicked in the call the board completely bricked and he had pocket sixes which is a hand that I would have expected him to fold more often than not. And I know a few other players at the table said that they were convinced I had at least aces here, if not a set. So I would have probably got it through against everyone else except for this villain. But so is life. I still think this was a really good bluff. And unfortunately, I got called this time. And now it was my time to go for the big hero call, though it wasn't actually that big. But anyway, let's start from the beginning. We raise it up, the cutoff calls, and he's quite a fishy, loose recreational player. Seven deuce deuce. This is a board that I won't see bet a lot out of position. However, against this type of opponent, and because we need protection, I'm happy to go for the bet. About two thirds pot, not quite. And we get the call. Now the King is good for our range, not great for our hand. Normally, if I had been bluffing, I would definitely use this card to go for a double barrel. So I check. He checks behind. That's good news. And on this 8 river, I'm thinking, well, I could check, but I do want to go for some value. If I make it small enough, a hand like 6s, 5s, 4s, 3s could call maybe even a hand like seven six nine seven so i went for a third pot bet and he now makes it 30. so we have two things to consider here on the one hand this does look pretty fishy but on the other hand it is strong for a recreational player to raise the river but then again he made it so small and because some draws brick there with the, mainly the flush draws, nothing else really. But also the fact that he doesn't represent a lot here. So a deuce, maybe a slow play deuce, but how many deuces does he really have? Ace two suited, he can only have ace two suited of diamonds. So that's one combo. Pocket sevens, there is only one combo of that. Then pocket eights, that's three combos. That is the one hand that he could have. But then wouldn't he make it a little bit bigger, only to 30? I just thought he's giving me such good odds here. I only need to be good one out of five times, pretty much. So I just thought, I, with all of this considered, I have to call. So I called and he showed up with a very surprising hand. Queen 10 offsuit. Yes, he had the queen of hearts and he had position, but I mean, honestly, I don't know why he even called preflop, but then I don't understand why he called on the flop. And then on the river, yeah, you can turn it into a bluff, but then just doing it in a more convincing way and just go something like five or six times my block bet. Anyway, I was happy to see what he had and we can move on. And last hand of the day, and I just want to show you once again how much value or villain lost in this hand. It's actually not a very interesting one. It's blind versus blind. The small blind raises to eight. I have ace nine offsuit. I consider three betting, but calling is fine here too. And flop comes ace king nine, and he checks, which made me a little bit suspicious because I thought normally most players would just love to see bet on this board. So if they don't do it, they either have thick value or thin value. Either way, against both of those hands, I don't want to bet myself. So I just check. And now on the sixth turn, he goes 10 into 16. At this point, nothing else for me to do than to call. And when the queen river hits, he makes it 20 into 36. So again, under half pot. I almost considered folding against this guy because he's a bit of a tighter player. But then I thought I still have really good ace here and he didn't even half pot it on the river. That doesn't seem too strong. So I thought maybe he has a weaker ace that he played this way or it could be a bluff. So I just decided to bluff catch. But that is not the point. The point is the hand that he had and how much value he lost he has pocket kings he flopped middle set it's blind versus blind i have an ace and he was terrified to not get 
any value, so he sacrificed value. Look at this one here. The pot was 17 on the flop. So if he makes it 10 there, I call, and then he can overbet the turn, and I would still call, and a lot of players would still even call a big bet on the river. Now, I would probably not have done that in live poker against this sort of a player, fair enough, but he could have had a big bet. And if you decide to slow play it and not bet the flop, then you have to go bigger on the turn and or the river. Like the turn, okay, you go for 10, but then over bet the river. This is how you lose value. You just slow play and slow playing rarely gets you anywhere unless you're up against a super aggressive opponent.